Good afternoon. Hi, I'm Dr. Lakia Wilson, the Medical Director of School-Based Health Centers in the Rochester Region Health System. Hi, and I'm Eve Gotham. I'm the Director of Child and Youth Services in Behavioral Health at Rochester Regional Health. Today we are here to talk about a really important topic. Um, September is Suicide Prevention Awareness Month, and so we wanted to talk with you a little bit about adolescent suicide, a topic that's hard to talk about but really important for us to address. So our goals today are to really raise awareness and then talk about resources that are in the community so that you can be connected for help if you need help. So we're going to talk from a perspective talking to parents and we will also, if you are an adult, all of these things are applicable as well and also if you're an adolescent. So I think the most important thing that we wanted to say first is that if you're having any thoughts of suicide that you are not alone and there are resources and people that want to help you. We're two of them and there are lots in our system that we will talk about later. Yes. Suicide is the second leading cause of death in youth from ages 15 to 24 and that's following the first um, leading cause of death is unintentional injuries and the third is being homicide. About 41 million individuals complete suicide in about a year. Yeah. Yeah, and that's pretty staggering. You know, with adults, people die of heart disease, cancer, other things. With adolescents, your adolescents are generally very healthy. Uh, so these, these issues rise to the top, and so that's the importance of talking about them. Exactly. We also have heard a lot about uh, suicide in the news lately, and there are pros and cons to that. It gets us having a conversation like we are today. But it also can be a risk factor, as, as we all know that talking about suicide can be a risk factor for some adolescents. So Eve, some of the parents of my patients have asked, is it okay for their children to watch the Netflix series 13 Reasons Why? And for those who do not know, this is um, a series on Netflix. Um, a young adolescent female has committed suicide. She has left behind seven cassette, cassette tapes to one of her friends, um, basically an audio diary of why she decided to end her life. And some of the reasons that she uh, mentioned were um, bullying, um, physical or sexual assault, um, betrayal, um, dismissal, um, guilt. Um, so those are some of the things that you know, was mentioned in, the, um, in this film. And parents have asked me if I have a child who as a, is at risk for suicide or feeling depressed or anxious, should I allow them to watch something like this? Those are great questions. So 13 Reasons Why is based on a book, also a young adult novel. So just kind of it, it is taking a novel and then it turned it into a little mini series. So what I usually say to parents is if they have a child who really does not have any mental health diagnoses or risk factors that this is probably fine for them to watch. I always encourage parents to sit and watch it with their kids so they can have a conversation yeah. about it, of course. But I don't think that that alone would, would be something that would give an idea to a youth. I am concerned if a youth does struggle with depression, anxiety, or other mental health conditions and might be already feeling some of these emotions or thoughts, having some of these mm -hmm. thoughts, I'm not saying that they should not watch it, but I think as a parent, you have to really use good judgment and be very careful. And there should be a non-negotiable that you are watching with them and having a discussion after each episode about what they've seen and what that means to them. Right, and how it differs from real life yes. as well. Right, right, it's TV, so exactly. it's pretend. Exactly. So Eve talked about some of the warning signs that parents can see in their youth that may have um, suicidal thoughts. So the first one is suicidal ideations, and that's when an individual is making threats or commenting about taking one's life. Um, another warning sign may be changes in behavior. They may be more aggressive, more impulsive. Um, there may be increased use of alcohol and substance use. Um, they may be a little bit more isolated. What other signs would you tell yeah. parents to look out for? I, I always tell parents it's a pretty distinct change. So it also may be that you have a child who was really involved in lots of activities at school and then suddenly something changes and they, they quit a lot of the activities. Isolation, staying in their room, um, even talking about feeling like they're a burden to other people or that they um, are taxing other people with their problems. Um, but we know also that when adolescents have depression, that 
with adults, they're kind of staying in bed, crying, those Correct. kind of things. And with adolescents, we see a lot more agitation, kind right. of irritability. irritability yes. So it comes out differently yes. with adolescents. And I think that's a really important thing. Right. I'm sure you've seen the yes. same in your practice. That's a really important thing for parents to just kind of know. I think also trouble sleeping uh, is, a, is a risk factor. Also anxiety is a, is a big, big risk, risk factor. factor as well. Um, so, so what we know is a lot of teenagers who think about suicide um, or even make a gesture, it's a very, for most, it's an impulsive thing. It, it, the time span between thinking about it and actually taking some sort of action is pretty quick. So that's where even having conversations about it before anything were right. to ever come up could be helpful because it just allows for teenagers to kind of take a step back, think about things a little bit. Exactly, exactly. So risk factors that we actually see in individuals that um, contemplate suicide is a family history of suicide in the family, um, drug use, mm -hmm. um, intoxication. One out of three individuals that actually completed suicide, they were intoxicated at the time. So as we mentioned, anxiety, depression, um, changes in mood or other things, lots of stressors, um, trauma, abuse, um, Mm -hmm. Recent loss, grief, mm -hmm. or some yep. of the other recent things. loss, grief, ending of a relationship, yep. which happens a lot for teenagers. Um, so, all of those things, not alone, are right. they, you know, signals or things that we should get worried about in isolation? But to put together, sometimes it is something that, right. as a parent, you want to watch out for. Right, and clinically, we do see more females. Um, having suicidal ideations, um, trying to attempt suicide. Um, so it's more common for the females to do it um, than the males, but males are four more times likely to actually um, complete a suicide by lethal means. Right, yes, yes, that's very important to kind of just be aware of and tuck in the back of your brain. And um, all of this is, is, can be scary to talk about. I think the important thing again is that not talking about it right. is probably scarier. Right, right. Yeah. So what do you tell families when they're afraid to discuss this with their teens because they think that if they talk about suicide, especially if a family member um, committed suicide in the past, and they're afraid to tell their kids because they think that they may right. want to do the same. Right, right. I think that it's important as parents to know that um, just many, many people have gotten to a place where they feel terrible and they feel like there's no out. That does not mean that they are actually going to take their own life. So to normalize that all of us have had difficult times, to s allow for people to talk about it, and then also to really know that just having an open conversation will not plant an idea in a child's head whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, it's very scary, I think, if a family has had someone who has died by suicide to think about the fear that that could happen again. And by talking about it, that will help prevent actually the, the, any kind of, um, you know, it could help. Right. Yeah. 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 So there are lots of places to start if you have concerns. I always tell families to go to their pediatrician. Yes, yes exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, and other places are great resources like school counselors. If you uh, belong to a church or, or any kind of religious organization, clergy have training in, in you know, counseling and talking. Uh, and also great resources in the mental health world as well mm -hmm. if you're concerned as a parent. Um, right here at Rochester Regional, we have a thing called open access, which means for families, you can just walk in at our Genesee Mental Health Clinic you can walk in every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning from 8.30 to 10, and uh, you can just come in. And it's when you need to, when it's right for you, and we encourage you to if that's something that you feel your child needs. And so a lot of our um, primary care practices, whether that's pediatrics, family medicine, or internal medicine, um, have embedded mental health. And so for one of the practices that I work at, um, we are very fortunate to have psychologists that work side by side with the physicians. And so for our patients that have mental health needs, we could get them in to see a provider and even a psychiatrist, a child mm -hmm. and adolescent psychiatrist. Yes, that's wonderful. We also have expanded our offerings and are in many local schools. 
So even starting with a school counselor to ask if there's a, a therapist from Rochester Regional in the school, uh, sometimes your child may not even need to miss school at all. They may mm -hmm. just be able to go in their study hall and talk with someone safe. Right. And if you're unable to use these resources, there's other resources. Nationally, um, the National um, Suicide Prevention Line is 1-800-273-TALK, and that's a 24-7 line that you can hotline. call it, hotline that you can call. And anybody can call that. Parents, adults, children, adolescents. It's open for everybody and it's a safe place to talk. Exactly. And so more locally here, um, we have mobile crisis we that do. we can actually utilize as well. Uh -huh. And you can access them by calling 211, which is easy to remember. Yes, exactly. So. So, you know, I, I think we wanted to just have this conversation today. This is not the only conversation we hope you have. If you have any questions, please feel free to um, make a comment after our presentation or even a uh, private message, the Rochester Regional Health Line, and we can get back to you. Please, please don't have any hesitation. We are here for you and we want to answer any questions you might have. Yes. Thanks for taking the time with us today. Have All a right. good afternoon. Have a great day.